Carbon Capture, Utilization and Sequestration, or CCUS, has been described as an essential component to support the global ambition to achieve net zero. It is an integral part of the energy transition and industrial decarbonisation, especially in hard to abate sectors. Because of the processes associated with sectors like cement and steel, there is no viable solution to decarbonise without CCUS. But for this solution to reach the scalability needed to meet the net zero equation, a new market ecosystem needs to be established. This will create a CCUS industry where emitters and project developers collaborate across geographies to overcome the challenges we face today. These and other topics will be discussed in the round table addressing CCUS industry scalability, the challenges and the future vision. I'm joined with Fred Majkout, Damien Girard and Gino Thielens. Thank you for being here. Fred, if I can start with you. CCUS is crucial for the energy transition. What scenarios and challenges do we anticipate in the next decade relating to the expansion of CCUS? In order to deliver realistic uh, net zero journeys, we'll have to rely on a number of pillars, right? Be it uh, energy efficiency, uptake of renewables, uptake of low carbon energy supply, and CCUS will be another key pillar. So when we look at scenarios, and, and really we're running a lot of scenarios based on IEA, IPCC, and so on, all of these scenarios indicate that a massive uptake in CCUS capacity will have to take place. Mm -hmm. So what do we mean by massive uptake? Today the industry is capturing and storing around 40 million tons per annum. Throughout this decade, we anticipate that by the end of the decade, we'll be storing several hundred million tons per annum and going into the next decade and the following one definitely we'll have to scale up to gigatons per annum in order to deliver uh, this net zero ambition. And maybe adding to that, there are two key elements to make CCS happen at scale. One is to put value on carbon and you create a value on carbon either by having a penalty to emitters like a license to operate or a fee for each ton that you put in the air or you create a carrot, an incentive for emitters to do something about the emission. Now, the good news is that a lot of governments are working on mechanism to enact those policies. For example, recently uh, the enactment of the IRA bill, which is actually putting a price on carbon and incentivizing emitters in doing CCS. The same is happening in Europe with the ETS, and we expect the same to happen in other markets around the world. We already see the emergence in the Middle East, in Brazil, in India, and other markets and hopefully more will happen. The second part is economies of scale achieved through common infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And so more and more we'll see the emergence of hubs or network where emitters can actually tag onto an existing infrastructure and reduce the unit cost for everybody by using the same transport and storage. Thank you, gentlemen. You've highlighted a lot of complexity around CCUS. So Fred, if I can come back to you, can you expand on what we have learned so far and how confident we can feel about the future growth of the CCUS industry? We have been participating in the CCUS industry for over two decades. And uh, in the mid-2000s, we did see actually an uptake in CCUS project announcements. Today, uh, we are much more comfortable in saying that the CCUS industry will scale up for a number of reasons. First, last year, for instance, in 2021, we've seen a record number of uh, CCUS projects being announced, more than twice as much of a previous record of 2008. Uh, as well, a major enabler or unlocker to CCUS at scale is what Damien's referred to. You do need regulatory clarity, and we do see actually the regulatory landscape evolving very fast, which I think is going to be a major uh, enabler to the scaling of CCUS. And as well, obviously, technology will play a, a key component in, uh, in uh, de-risking future CCUS projects. So Damien, um, understanding the complexity of CCUS and across industry sectors, what kind of partnerships and business models are needed to enable CCUS expansion? Well, I think it's important to put this into the context of where CCUS industry will go. What will happen in the future is quite different from what happened in the past which was mostly around natural gas processing into enhanced oil recovery, 
done mostly by oil and gas players. The future will be essentially uh, CO2 from industrial emissions and going into dedicated saline formation. These are very different contexts commercially and technically. Also, when you look at the competencies required to make CCS happen at scale, you're talking about very different kind of skill sets. On one side, you have gas separation and capture technologies. You have also transport over large, you know, very long distances. And you have all the subsurface skill required to be able to store CO2. When you look at those competencies, it's very difficult to see one company being able to do it all on themselves. And that will require people to join forces. We'll see the emergence of unusual kind of consortium, companies, technologists, to, together with private equity, together with midstream companies, oil and gas companies, and the emitters coming together to make those ventures happen. These are complex business models. They will require people to work together that haven't worked together before and we want to play a role as well to enable those projects by bringing a set of technologies in the equation. And if I may add to that, is our investment in technology and expertise, we believe that that makes us a better industry partner to work with. Yeah, no, thank you. And actually, that's a great point that leads me into the, to the next question, Gino. So, Damien, we talked about partnerships and business models. And Gino, you took us into the technology space. These are key elements for a successful CCUS project. So what, what's really needed in terms of technology to support and accelerate growth of CCUS? Can you talk to us a little bit about that, please? If you look at it from a project life cycle aspect, there are four distinct phases. So there's a site screening, a site evaluation, the construction phase, and then the operations phase. And uh, we have been and will continue to invest heavily in developing technologies across all those four phases. Um, and those technologies really serve three purposes. The first one being basically to better map and reduce risk. The second one is basically to reduce cost because it is a cost-driven industry. Um, and the third one is basically acceleration, particularly in the planning phases is, you know, how can you basically accelerate the planning stages and get project to final investment decision faster? If you look at it from a regulator perspective, um, many of the regulators are in the permitting process are still very much concerned with, are the, the risks properly understood? particularly with respect to potential leakage, and are they properly mitigated? And a lot of our technology developments uh, go in that, uh, in that direction. Um, and in addition as well, we, we have been investing uh, quite, quite strongly in developing the competencies of our workforce and developing the workflows on managing these projects, um, because we believe that basically will help us to basically deliver projects in a more consistent manner. Um, and also make us a better partner for uh, the companies that we work with in, in, in bringing value to the table. Thank you, Gino. Really appreciate it. Fred, I'm going to come to you for the final question. Gino's highlighted the fundamental role of technology. When we look at such complex engineering projects, how do we see our solutions evolving to enable growth um, of CCUS? and to achieve the ambition of CCUS? I think as uh, Gino and, uh, and Damien pointed out, technology will have to drive de-risking, which means today there's significant pushback against CCUS because of forcing the risk of storing CO2 for the long term. I think it's a fair statement to say that a lot of CCUS projects have not gone through because of economics. And, uh, and us as, a, as an organization, I think it's fair to say we've been participating very heavily in the storage part of the CCUS value chain. And moving forward, we are intending to enhance some of our solutions workflows. And as well, we are investing in developing uh, disruptive uh, technologies on the, capture, on the CO2 capture side in order to drive uh, total project costs down and enhance life cycle, uh, life cycle economics. So this technology industrialization combined with collaborative partnerships is what's going to drive the industry forward. Thank you. It certainly sounds like a, a very exciting space and something we can all look forward to in the, you know, over the, over the coming months and, and years. So again, thank you. Very much appreciate you sharing your insights. The CCUS industry needs a bold approach, an approach proven in technology and expertise. We tackle these challenges with a suite of innovative technologies and technical expertise, along with digital capabilities for geological interpretation, simulations and monitoring, and investing in new technology development
to answer the specific challenges of CO2 capture. We validate each aspect of a CCUS project for economic feasibility and long-term reliability and partner with CCUS players to develop the solutions needed for global net zero ambitions. To achieve these ambitions, all scenarios show that CO2 capture and sequestration are needed at gigaton scale by 2050. We are ready to apply proven technologies and the expertise needed to design CCUS solutions for different industrial sectors. And we are ready to forge new collaborations to accelerate and scale up the industry landscape of CCUS.